Hi YouTube and motorcycle fans. What I want to say is welcome to the best kept secret when it comes to helmets and especially say a race helmet or a sport oriented helmet. Let me present to you the LS2 Aero Evo Carbon. Sort of a mouthful, but when it comes to products nowadays, it's quite normal, I guess. What is this helmet? First and foremost, I'm going to leave the background of LS2 at the end. It is not a very well-known brand. It definitely isn't those big Italian brands or Japanese brands. It is a, and it's not an up and coming brand either. However, LS2 has sponsored, has sponsored um, MotoGP riders, Moto2, Moto3 riders, and some World Superbike riders, but they're sort of off the map and not really many people know about them. Why is the Aero such a good buy? Well, this helmet on sale, which it has been on sale for a long time in Canada, is only $350 with a graphic okay plus tax but free shipping 350 dollars is not even going to get you some of the even a mid-grade helmet from some of the big brands when it comes to the sport sport oriented helmet for 350 bucks you're getting a full carbon shell and it's not just cheap carbon or whatever what you're getting here is a full dot plus ece Plus this helmet has a level four sharp rating. So we're talking about everything when it comes to safety, the best of the best, when it comes to all the certifications and ratings. That's a huge feat, okay? Not even, a lot of brands don't even put the money to get their certifi certification under sharp, and they may not even do both EC and DOT, they might just do one or the other. Sharp is a big thing. Um, it's a whole another independent type of testing body that has recently surfaced and a lot of companies just decided to forego that. But the fact that the LS2 Aero Carbon Evo has gone all three and level four on Sharp is very high. It's, it's out of five. So I don't even know of any helmet that's level five, but please look that up if you're not too familiar with, with the Sharp rating. So what does this helmet have to offer? You're getting a really nice, aggressive, uh, race helmet design you're getting that nice carbon shell as you can see with a really nice carbon lay overlay and of course this is graphic dependent what you're also getting is the pull out tabs for safety you're getting a really really high quality liner here we're talking about agv pista corsa uh, we're talking about over one thousand dollar Typically over $1,000 is what you're going to be paying before you're going to get a liner like this. Okay, so, you know, you're getting that very premium European type of liner. It wicks sweat very, very well, and it's super comfortable on your head. Really, really comfortable. You're also getting the typical dual D-ring strap system, as you see on all race helmets. There is also a chin curtain here but I have removed that just for ease of on and off since this is my street helmet. You're getting a really, really easy vent, front chin vent opening and closing here. This is protrudes quite a bit, so you can actually manipulate this very easily. On the top for venting, you're gonna have a similar, uh, very easy way to open and close these vents. And for the visor system, it is a central visor system, so people using AGV, uh, Nolan, and stuff like that is going to be quite similar to that European type of style. The one thing I'm going to have to say that they didn't do such a good job on, or maybe they did that on purpose, is that this, the button to unlatch the visor so it can articulate open is extremely small. Like, this is really, really small. And also, there's no obvious tactile sign that you're on it. So when you're wearing a glove, there's no way you know that you're actually on this button. The second thing is that it is hilariously stiff. This is hilariously stiff. To push in, ugh, you have to put a lot of force and get that visor up. The good thing is this visor is very, very sturdy. We're talking about, I'm talking about quality of sturdiness that I actually haven't seen on any other helmet. And my race helmet is an AGV Pista. 
uh, GPR, okay? So that's a $1,300 helmet. You push this up, and when you just, this action of moving the visor up and down is so sturdy and so reassuring. It's uh, really, really nice, really nice to use. So you, you can crack it open a little bit, but once you push it up a little bit, it sort of wants to go about three quarters, and then you can go all the way as well. So from three quarters to fully open, it's a really nice, solid action. So that visor mechanism here, uh, it's clearly proprietary, something that they have developed on their own, and it works really, really well. So full marks to us too there. And some, you can even argue that having an overly stiff latch is a good thing because it means that they're more concerned about keeping that visor on in the event of a crash instead of having just rip off that you see in a lot of other helmet manufacturers when cra racers crash, the visor just rips off and then all that kitty litter gets in your face and it can be actually quite dangerous because if a visor rips off, then you have actual, the visor ends can actually come into your face. So that's quite dangerous as well. So on the stock helmet, you're gonna get a clear visor. You're not gonna get any other visor with this, but with this visor, you're gonna have the tabs so you can put on tear off. So this is a really pure type of race visor, which is really, really nice in that, in that regard. This helmet is also extremely light because it is, and you can't just say because it is full carbon. For example, a Bell Star Series, although I really like the helmet because it has the omnidirectional line or shell that allows that rotational of the impact to absorb that uh, initial force that you see in the MIPS system, the MIP system, and they've developed their own flex system, but it adds just too much weight to the helmet. It is a, way too heavy for a race helmet. I know Bell has upgraded that, but even their carbon helmets are not that light. This is legitimately a very, very light helmet, which means there's no neck, very, very little neck fatigue, if any at all. And for Shi helmet, because you're wearing this sometimes for hours on end, I had no fatigue wearing this helmet, so it's really good. Aerodynamics, I can comment as well on the highway. You know, you're doing pretty fast speeds and I don't ride a sport bike, I ride a cafe racer, so, which means that there's this wind coming at me. When you tilt your head down just, just a little bit, you can immediately tell there's a ton of airflow flowing over your helmet. It's just so streamlined. This is a really, really well designed helmet when it comes to aerodynamics. For the venting itself, how does it vent when the vents are open? I can also comment events very, very well. You can actually feel the air coming down the top of your head with these vents open. And it's a really nice feeling and it's very confirming that these vents are actually doing something. It, it tells you like, you know, when you're riding, you have that air sheen on the top of your head. It's a very interesting feeling and nothing really can replicate that type of feeling. So when it's there, you know it's there and you know what's actually causing that and that's the vents on the helmet which is really really nice on the front the front vent actually i don't feel as much air coming through the front but at the same time it's i believe there should be because you know i feel much more airy in in the helmet when i have the front vent on but some other helmets when you have the front vent on it like shoots right at your eyes and your nose and your face and almost dries your eyes out for this one i'm not sure if they designed it a little bit different for it to sort of dissipate throughout your head but whatever they've done, they have made it so the front vent doesn't shoot right at your face and the airflow direction might even be better. So it might not be as obvious, but it's probably still working. And I think the exhaust vents as well have a lot to do with how this helmet vents because air has to go somewhere and air, the only way your head's gonna feel flow of air is if the air is actually flowing. So if air is only coming in but not coming out, there won't be that stream of air, which means that your head probably won't actually feel the air coming through. So that means the way they design the air channels in the liner, in that EPS, means that the air is actually channeling quite well. Now what this helmet doesn't have is that a lot of of the newer design helmets have is a really aggressive spoiler. So on this one, it's a little, it's a little baby spoiler here, as you can see. 
It's just a little, just a little guy, you know, relative to what you're going to see nowadays, especially like the shark spoiler is just ridiculous looking on their helmet and um, the GP, the Pista GPR is pretty, is nice and aggressive as well. And I think Shoei's getting more aggressive. The only ones that aren't as aggressive still are like HJC. Even Arai with their super old design has sort of just thrown a spoiler on there to make it a bit bigger. But the LS2 Aero is actually not a very new helmet. They've just done a really good job in designing this helmet. But I think they're about due to upgrade this helmet and I wouldn't be surprised if they actually have a new model coming out soon. Now, now I am going to tell you what the hell LS2 is. So LS2 is actually a Chinese brand. This is the oldest, from what I understand, the oldest Chinese brand. So they've been making helmets for a long time. So I think since maybe the 60s or 70s. And what they've been doing all these years is making helmets for OEMs. So basically all those brands that want helmet they had outsourced to LS2, well, before it wasn't called LS2, it was probably just some random name, and LS2 would be making helmets for all these OEMs. And then finally, I think in the early 2000s or mid 2000s, the owner of LS2 decided, you know what, we're making all these helmets for OEMs, and we can clearly make good helmets because they have certain demands and stuff like that. Why don't we just make our own helmet and finally have our own brand? And that's where LS2 LS2 has been born, okay? So they have been making helmets for a very, very long time. So they definitely know what they're doing. And finally, they've created their own brand and they've created a race helmet. And you can tell right away that they know what they're doing. Like this helmet is so well built. And it's almost shocking because when you pick up a new RI, it feels flimsy. I'm not gonna lie. Um, an AGV feels really, really rock solid as well. But uh, I picked up some other helmets and especially at this price for $350, I just don't know how they're making this such a good product. I mean, that is on sale, okay? So this helmet originally is about 600, which is still two, three hundred dollars for two, three, four hundred dollars because this is a graphic model cheaper than your Japanese brand or your Italian top of the line race helmet. So, um, you know, all Arai, the Jeep, the Arai helmet that's in carbon is well over a thousand. The piece of GPR is over a thousand. The Nolan, uh, I forget what it's called now, is a slightly under a thousand for a graphic. And uh, the Shoei is slightly under a thousand as well. But, you know, we're talking about quality that is either on par or better. And they have the certification to back that up as well. So this is definitely, in my opinion, the helmets world best kept secret. Just if you have to be able to get over the brand. I mean, when HJC came out, a lot of people, you know, didn't know what it was all about as well. And of course, they spent a ton of money on marketing and throwing their helmets at every single rider, MotoGP rider on the grid as it could. LS2 hasn't really done that, so they're sort of laid low a little bit. But I think if you are looking for a helmet, this is a super, super, super good buy. The only thing that I need to tell you about, about this helmet is about fitment. So fitment wise, if you read online and you're Googling it right now as I'm talking about LS2 helmet, a lot of people are gonna say the arrow runs small, runs small, runs small. When I first got this helmet, I also thought it runs small. So I wear a medium and a showy X11, X12. I run a large in a, in a AGV Pista GP R, Asian head format um, But I generally run medium in, in most helmets So I bought a medium in this helmet and I could barely get this on and the, So what I have to say is the opening is quite narrow. Okay, so just I Know it's gonna it's gonna when you have you get this helmet and you try to put it on you're gonna think this is too small This is too small. That's the immediate thought you're gonna have but once you put it on It's on and the other thing that you need to really make sure of when you put this helmet on is that you pull the whole helmet down, right down, like really, really down into your head where the top of your head is touching the top of like the inner side of the helmet. Because if it's not like that, then the pads are not positioned properly. And that's what I noticed about this helmet. It's very, very interesting. It's, 
it's very difficult to describe. I know I'm sort of almost making this helmet seem like magic, but when you put this helmet on, if you don't put it on all the way, it'll actually hurt. So this, when I first rode with this helmet, I was like, I can't wear this helmet. It's killing my cheeks, really killing my cheeks. The cheek pads were just crushing me. And then I just, I just you know, I, I couldn't ride. Actually, I actually had to brake. So then in, in, in my efforts to sort of just make myself more comfortable, I just ended up tugging so hard on the straps and just pulling the helmet down totally. And that just changed everything. The whole way this helmet felt um, around the top of your head is really like on your head in a, sort of, in a sort of comforting way as if like two hands were sort of just on top of your head like that. And then the cheek pads are no longer putting pressure on, the, on my cheek in a discomforting way. And finally, I realized that I just wasn't pulling down hard enough on the, t on, the t on the straps to get this helmet on because other helmets, you don't really need to do that. This helmet, when you put it on, is, if you put it on the way you put on other helmets, it actually doesn't seat. You actually need to really pull this down for it to seat properly on your head. So that is something you really, really need to make sure of with this helmet. If you read reviews, there's, I think there's a review on Fortnite where I bought this helmet. Someone made a very, very similar comment, which is exactly what I said. You know, when you first put this helmet on, you're going to think it's small. But when you pull it down and really get the fitment right on your head before strapping, then you know that this helmet is actually fitting right. So long story short, get the size that you usually wear. When you get it, don't be scared about when you're putting on how tight it feels. And then when you actually have it on, make sure you really pull the helmet down onto your head, nice and snug, nice and on, and then wear it for about 15, 20, 30 minutes, and then judge. And I'd say even wear it even a bit longer because I actually do believe there's a little bit of a break-in period for these pads on this arrow. But honestly, after I wore it properly, I never had any issues. So the thing I really need to convey is that when this helmet is not worn properly it will actually cause pain right so discomfort and you'd want to not ever wear this helmet again or you thought you thought you bought the wrong size but when it's on it's actually the most comfortable helmet ever so you really i really need to put that put that out there and a lot of the commenters have also uh, i mean one one comment i've seen on, online uh, I said the same thing so that's something very unique about this helmet just i know it sounds silly just how to put on a helmet i mean it sounds so redundant right but just the shape of this helmet almost looks more uh, almost like a race car helmet more than a motorcycle helmet but i mean you can even see how the back protrudes a little bit your head sort of fits like back in here so it's not so much you're putting it on like top down but once you pull, pull it, pull it in, the helm sort of shifts forward a little bit and your head sort of shifts back and it's sort of like cuddled in this little nest back there. And then you realize that, okay, yeah, you know that this helmet is on properly now. So I think that's another reason why this has sort of been such a big secret because maybe people buy this helmet and they can't find the right sizing and they return it and they don't know what's going on. But boy, if you, you know, just, Give this helmet a try. I mean, a lot of places are free returns. If you're looking for a new sport helmet, just give the give, give the LST Arrow a try. Visors are really cheap. You can get a smoke visor for about 30 bucks after tax. So Canadian dollars. So that is my very lengthy 20 minute uh, review on the Arrow. It is, I think, the helmet industry's best kept secret. Thank you for watching. If you like, please subscribe. If you have questions, please comment below and I will answer to my best of my ability and like if you like this video. Thank you.